Martha. Hey. <clears throat> Nine people in the waiting room already. That's exciting. <laughs> Thank you, co-hosts. I know, that's awesome. They're early. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're already a co-host. Perfect. Um, should I start letting folks in? Sure. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Hey folks, welcome to the AB42 platform update demo. We're gonna get started here so shortly. Um, see folks are getting filtered in. Well, we'll be starting momentarily. Thanks for joining. So I see a few more uh, participants are still joining us. Um, but for the sake of time, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get started here. Um, this uh, webinar is being recorded um, so that we can make it available um, at a later time. Um, you'll surely be notified once it's uh, available uh, to um, view the recording. So again, this is the uh, AB42 platform update demo. Um, I'm joined by my co-host, Martha Grant, and we're gonna go ahead and get started this uh, afternoon or morning, depending on where you're joining us from. Thank you. So this is today's agenda. Uh, we're gonna do brief intros, um, just so that we uh, make sure uh, you know who's uh, hosting you today. Um, I'm quite sure folks might be familiar with uh, Martha or myself, but it never hurts to do intros. Um, you will note that you're muted. That's just to get, uh, keep uh, background noise to uh, a minimum, um, but we will be uh, fielding information via the chat um, as it comes up. But we do have a tight agenda today and we wanna be able to show you these exciting updates. Um, so we're gonna do intros. Um, uh, Martha's gonna take us through the cooperative development pro uh, process and brief overview of that, which was so important to these updates you're gonna see. I'm gonna go over some terms and concepts um, that are gonna be helpful as we talk about these, uh, these updates. And then we'll actually go into a live preview of the platform. Um, after that, we'll talk a bit about next steps and we'll wrap up and we will uh, we'll let you go free. So thanks again for joining us. Um, brief introduction uh, for myself. My name is Seth. Uh, I joined uh, the team Action Builder two years ago uh, to help launch um, as a member coordinator. Um, now in my role as um, a partner success specialist I'm still working with uh, our partners on, on Action Builder um, as they onboard, um, and also daily working on the help desk um, for both of our tool sets, which include Action Network and Action Builder. Um, but really excited and proud about the work that we've been doing with our partners over the past two years. I can't believe it. Um, and today, I'm so happy to be able to kind of showcase uh, where we're taking those next steps in our upgrades. Um, so I'm joined by Martha, and I'll let Martha introduce herself. Hey everybody, Martha Grant, Director of Cooperative Development for Action Builder and our sister tool set, Action Network. Um, super excited to be with you here today. Um, Action Builder is something that we have been building for four years almost now. 
Um, and uh, it's so exciting as it continues to grow and evolve. Thanks, Martha. So I'll talk a little bit about our cooperative development process to kick this off. So this deploy, um, this set of changes to the system, um, we've called it AB42 for uh, 42, the meaning of life, the universe and everything. Um, and uh, this is a deploy that we started talking about in our cooperative development process before the tool was really even fully launched um, in 2018. We build our tools, all of our tools, Action Network and Action Builder, through a cooperative development process um, where we work closely with, in this case, for Action Builder, the AFL-CIO affiliated unions, and I see a lot of you um, are on this call, um, to actually build what organizers need. So uh, my job has been to facilitate meetings with organizers around the country um, to figure out what are we going to build next for Action Builder? How can we evolve the tool so it better meets our, our needs as a movement um, for building power across our communities, building worker power? So uh, this Action Builder 42 um, specifically came out of discussions of how can we do more power mapping, do more strategic mapping of different people's relationships, where people sit in relationship to their communities, where people sit in relationship to different power centers. Um, and uh, especially on the building trade side, how do subcontractors, contractors, developers, these non-people um, entities relate to one another? So I'll kick it back to Seth to talk in more detail about this particular bit. Cool, thank you, Martha, uh, for setting that context for us today. Um, so I promise you we're going to get a live uh, demo of the tool, but I want to get through some uh, some core concepts here first. It's going to make it more helpful as we talk about uh, AB42. So some terms to know: um, entity. So I mean, this is this may not be something in your everyday lexicon, but an entity for our sake is just anything about which information or data can be stored in a database. So that's a more technical concept, but it's really simply just anything with a distinct and independent existence. Okay. Um, so Martha already alluded to it. We want to be able to uh, map our power, um, not just um, you know inclusive of people in our work sites, but there's way more things that we can be tracking. So we're, be, we're happy to be able to, to bring that to light. And then in addition to that, connections. So a connection is a relationship in which a person, thing, or idea is linked or associated with something else. So you might have seen that uh, now as they exist in relationships. Um, but now we are migrating that to be known as connections because we can have so many different connections, which we'll get more into. So again, an entity uh, could be any, anything really, a place with a, a distinct and independent existence. So we'll get in more to the, what that means, but I wanted to just be able to kind of show some different images, again, to allude to what we might start looking at as far as uh, tracking. So then lastly, I really like this image. Uh, I found this from a Greater Boston Toolkit, but essentially just kind of looking at these connections uh, between these various like entities that exist within our community. So I want to get into a little bit of the changes by user types. As you know, we have uh, four different um, uh, four different user types in the system. Um, for admins, you're going to see most of the changes. Um, I'm logged in as an admin every day. I think most of the folks that are joining us, you, you're most likely admins as well. Um, so you are the power user. In, in, with your new uh, with your new tools and your toolkit, if you will, you'll be able to actually create these entities and the connection types. You'll be the person that's going to be really thinking about the data and the structure. Um, whereas leads, um, you know, they have a little less access, but they still will be able to choose which entity types and connections are present um, within the campaign. So what what do you what is what is really kind of needed to be tracked? Um, the same thing that we did in the past, as far as like setting up those data structures um, in the back end, if you will, as admin. Um, you still will be able to do that and apply that across the campaigns that you, that you want to. Um, you can turn them on and off and I'll give up that as well. And then uh, with our activists and our organizers um, and their work that they do every day, uh, I always say that my, 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 one of my favorite features um, in Action Builder is the tasks. So as they're doing their everyday work, they're still able to add information. They can add these entities and connections onto uh, individuals' profiles. And then they can, um, but it's really, really important to know that organizers can only add entities as well. So this image here kind of shows us, gives us a sneak peek of what that kind of So an uh, entity could be a person, school, 
um, you might want to create a new community organization. And if you have access to the chat, I just would be interested uh, to just gauge folks' uh, kind of excitement on this. Give me some plus signs if you kind of thinking about how this might uh, be helpful uh, with the work that you're doing currently, or maybe the work that you're planning in 2021. So again, this image here is another sneak peek. Um, it's showing you when you're logged in as an admin, um, you're gonna have some new menu options. So entity types. Um, so entities enable you to organize and track the people and groups most important to your organization in the way that makes the most sense for your organizers. So every program is gonna be a little bit different. Everyone has their own working style and it really does give you that good flexibility. So adding a new entity type creates opportunities to conveniently and strategically categorize those, uh, those groups and people. And then by default, each organization starts with the, the most fundamental entity type. So it's people, it's still people, it's still gonna be the cornerstone of uh, your wall chart um, as a default. Um, next, we have uh, connection types and connections allow you to define relationships uh, between the different entity types tracked by your organization. So we talked about that uh, being kind of like our, our movement from relationships and really being able to track those, uh, those connections. So um, they do allow you to define relationships between the different entity types tracked by your organization. And these connections really help provide additional context that explains how one entity is linked to another. And when managing a campaign, your organizers can also apply info to each individual connection to provide further essential details. So again, just being able to have all the information you need at your fingertips in order to make really good decisions on how you're gonna have these follow-up conversations with individuals. Um, and while connection types are created um, and managed at the organization level, individual connection types can be turned on or off as needed. So again, we will have an option to see that, um, but basically you can turn them on and off using, um, using a, a click of a button. And then lastly, you'll notice integrations. Um, this is something that's coming down um, yeah, as, far, as, far, as far as part of the update as well, but integrations, um, if you're familiar, you know that um, you can, you can um, actually configure a third-party app, um, just like Action Network, and be able to sync information in between the two systems. So that's really, really exciting. Um, so as an example for the, uh, the connections, I know uh, when, when Martha was giving me the sneak peek in the demo, um, she actually mentioned, uh, I don't know if you can talk about it, but with the musicians and the different gigs that folks could, could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so one of the fun things about this is that you'll have complete control as admins of the tool to create whatever entity types make sense for you. Um, so if you are uh, somebody who works a lot of different gigs, um, you could have a relationship directly to a gig. Um, and if there's a group of people that you consistently work with, like if you consistently work with a particular band or with a particular composer, you could create an entity type that's like composer or band. And as a person, you could have a relationship both to a specific job that you're working, to a specific gig that you're working um, in a particular place. And you could also have a relationship tracked in the system to a particular band that you tend to work with or to a particular composer you tend to work with. So it really creates this very um, elastic, very flexible way of tracking information in the system and nestling people in these networks that they very truly are a part of in like all of these connections that they're a part of. Um, it's gonna be fun, yeah. yeah. Thanks, yeah. So when, when Martha was explaining that, um, it was a really good example. And those are actual real life examples from our partners who are saying, hey, you know, this would be um, really helpful for the work that we do with organizers um, within Action Builder to be able to better track. So improved info tracking is one of the biggest uh, kind of pluses to this up, uh, the, to the AB42 update. So I have a visual here, basically just showing you how we can just track and better map these relationships. So. Um, I think folks that are using Action Builder now, you're familiar with having people on your wall chart, um, but now we're able to, uh, in, in being able to connect them maybe to work sites um, and to employers. Um, but now we have a really robust opportunity to, um, in addition to that, um, track how people are connected to uh, the churches, our community organizations and where they live, um, and even con subcontractors. 
Um, and then we also can center at the, at the wall chart, because um, if you've used AB in the past, you probably have noticed that maybe you've tried to be able to um, track things like subcontractors um, on the wall chart. And now we can definitely do that in addition to people. Um, I'll show you how you can toggle in between um, those different views in the live demo as well. But here I'm demonstrating, um, perhaps we're looking at foundations. And we're, we want, really want to track how those um, foundations uh, connect with uh, the universities, uh, maybe across the country or within the region. Uh, and maybe how they connect with different donors and maybe student workers within that university and maybe the buildings on campus. So now we can really kind of track the connections between and map out um, how all this is working um, in order to build power around a specific um, campaign. Okay, that's pretty much my talking head uh, uh, aspect of the presentation here. I'm actually gonna go away from the presentation and actually hop uh, right in to the demo. And I know uh, we we have a uh, we only have like a limited amount of time with each other the, with each other today. Um, there are going to be plenty of opportunities to be able to participate in demos and trainings. Um, in fact, the update is uh, now part of the demo, which we host every Tuesday. Um, so if folks want a refresher, um, feel free to to join those demos as well. Um, but what you're seeing here is the AB42 test site. Um, I'm in a campaign called AB Demo. Um, as I mentioned in the menu here, I'm signing as an admin. You'll see like these new menu items. Um, and I kind of want to show you the front end view um, first. Um, so here we still have the wall chart and then we still see the people on the wall chart. We still have our friend Janetta here um, who seems to find her way in all, to all of our campaigns. She's really active. Um, she's still a one. Uh, as you can see visually, not much has changed. Still clean um, uh, interface that we're all familiar with. Um, we still have the ability to use this quick menu. We still have our top lines. Um, I can still click on Janetta's name and then go into the profile. But here you start noticing um, a few changes on the profile itself. It's a lot cleaner. Uh, we noticed that we now have uh, the top line information, the quick actions uh, about Janetta pulled right up uh, top in the interface. Um, and even from the phone view, um, it's even that much more clean. Um, and then we have our core information about Janetta here still uh, defaulted on the uh, profile view. Um, we still have our assessments. Um, set as its own, uh, its own independent uh, tab on the profile as well. Um, assessment history still remains, um, but here is where we kind of um, see the kind of uh, some, more, some more changes, if you will, um, that allow us to really uh, be able to better uh, have an idea of where Janetta is, how she's connected to folks. And in addition to those connections with other people, which uh, used to be relationships, we now see how Jeanette is connected to perhaps a building, as I mentioned, on like a campus, for example, or maybe uh, if she's working in uh, a multi-use uh, property or something like that, where she might be located. Um, we're still tracking information about the individual, um, but in, in, in addition to that, we can see these connections here that exist. So now I see um, how Jeanette is connected to the churches in her community. Um, here I'm seeing two, uh, forgive the names of these churches, these are completely, um, this is just uh, make-believe data, uh, but if I, if I wanted to go uh, within this, I'd be able to click on that name, and now I can actually see I am tracking uh, a church uh, within, uh, within my campaign. So I still have my top line information, I'm still seeing the uh, assessments available, so in addition to assessing folks, we can assess these entities uh, like a church. And we can also um, add information on the churches as well. So now I'm tracking like the denomination. Uh, maybe I want to know the congregation size. Um, and now I can see not only is Janetta connected to the church, um, but the church is also connected to uh, uh, Janetta as well. And I can see the notes on that information. So now I can see, well, we know that uh, Janetta has attended this church for 12 years. Um, and I think that's pretty incredible. Um, this is something folks have been asking for. Um, and we can all we all know why that would be something that would be important to be able to kind of incorporate into the organizing and being able to track. We still can set up our campaigns uh, per normal and have the ability to search through those campaigns and pull that up. And then if we look at uh, the customized tab that has changed a little bit. So I'm still on my campaign AB42 demo. And now you'll notice that in this general first tab for, uh, for the actual campaign itself, we now have more ability to pull in these entity types, which I'll talk about a little bit. Um, the admins have the ability to create. 
We can look at our primary entity, as I mentioned, we know that it defaults to people, but um, I've uh, gone through here and we've created some various entity types, inclusive of churches, events, community orgs, subcontractors, and buildings. So I have the ability to basically customize what I want, uh, and what types of entities I want in this campaign and what types of connections I want between the entity, entities in this campaign as well. Uh, we still have the ability to pull in info. So this is where we get even more robust because not even, because not only can we uh, have info on people, but we can have info on the churches. Um, I kind of showed you that from the front end, um, community orgs. So it kind of all works in that same way. So again, really in its simplest form, the ability to be able to track uh, more information about uh, all, the all the various kind of pieces and components uh, of a person because uh, a person is not singular. A person interacts uh, with all types of uh, entities within their community. Uh, we, we can pull in top line information um, specific to the entity type. So that's kind of exciting. Um, so again, not you notice the difference here. So prior, we'd be able to just do the top lines for the people on our wall chart, but we can actually choose the top line information for our various entities as well. Users are the same and then integrations in the same. So if you'll note here, for your individual campaign, if you do have a group and action network, this is the place where you would go in order to connect your group to your campaign. I'll pause there. I don't know. Uh, did you have anything you wanted to add, um, Martha, as we're kind of going through it here? I don't have anything to add. I think this was really good, really thorough. Awesome. So I showed you the wall chart. Um, we still have the ability to use our different chart views here. So you're familiar with the, the chart view and the map view. That's still the same, um, but if we go into the admin section here, um, you'll notice again, we have the option to set up our entity type. So if I click on that here, you'll see kind of like um, how I've set up all this data on um, the data structures um, for my campaigns. Um, as simple as it was to create those custom fields and responses, um, we do that in the same way for these entity types. Um, you know, Again, by default, we have people. We still can collect all that information about a person, their nicknames, their first name, their last name. We can now do a single full name and last name so that it can be appeared in one column together instead of uh, separately. Uh, and then we can actually choose which campaign this entity type belongs to. I'm gonna show you kind of a little bit of how I set up churches. I think that's pretty interesting. Um, subcontractors might be interesting to some folks as well. Actually, I just added a list to that. Let's take a peek at that actually. So uh, for that, I have the name, subcontractors, singular, subcontractor. I can manage the info on that, uh, on that uh, actual entity itself. So again, here's the subcontractors and I can actually create my section fields and responses on the subcontractors. So this is kind of mind blowing for uh, folks that wanna track uh, information like that. For the churches, Again, I can choose which uh, campaign I want this entity to uh, belong to. So I could pull up that information, not only from the, cam uh, from the campaign on the customized page, but also um, from uh, this, this info page as well. I'm sorry, the entities page. Still getting used to the, uh, to the new names of, of, uh, of these different pieces. But as you can see, they do uh, really kind of work in a similar fashion as they worked before. The main thing here is that we're able to just track more of the various uh, places and people um, that folks are gonna be interacting with and things that are gonna be uh, very important and interesting for you to be able to track as organizers. Um, so as, as an admin, again, um, in this user access role, I'm the only one that's able to actually create these new entity types. Um, in addition to that, I'm the only one that can actually create the connection types. So let's go into connection types. So once I create the entity types, I wanna actually understand, I wanna actually uh, be able to apply, and I wanted to use the word understand because we really wanna, we do wanna understand how folks are connecting uh, with these various entities. Um, so as you're kind of thinking through that strategy, um, this is where you would have, have the ability to create those connection types. Um, so we can do things like uh, connect uh, the churches to the community orgs. In that way, um, I've already created a connection. Um, I've selected my first entity type, which was churches, and uh, then the second entity type, which was community orgs. I can choose how that's displayed. I can click here to manage that info again. <clears throat> and this is the area where I'm, you see I just bounce over to the info tab. I can actually add information on the connection type. 
and that's really cool there. So as you, as you can see, you get more specific in the ways that you can uh, track uh, information about your entities. And then additionally for the connections um, that exist between those entities. So I'm gonna actually hop back over to this campaign and kind of show you how that, that setup looks like in like uh, real time. So I'm on my wall chart here. <clears throat> and then again, with the wall chart, you'll notice that there are some changes here. So off over to the right, you know, we have our wall chart. We can do all types of cool things as far as kind of saving and loading queries. So you'll notice here, we now have entity types. So in entity types, I can actually select which kind of entities within this campaign I want to show on my wall chart. Right now, I'm just showing people. So now I'm gonna actually just show uh, churches. So actually, you know, I'm gonna show community orgs. Again, I can select all of them, um, but right now I'm just selecting community orgs. I'm gonna hit run query. And now I'm gonna return all the community organizations in this campaign that I'm tracking. Uh, I have a hundred of them. Again, ex excuse the names. I actually uploaded just the names of random movies, um, but we're gonna pretend that they're community orgs. So if I went into uh, the mascot here, uh, again, we're now tracking all that similar information. I don't have top lines pulled in, uh, but if I wanted to, I'd do that from the customize tab. Uh, if I wanted to go into the info, I'd be able to see here all the different connections and infos that I'm tracking, right? So I have the ability to um, look at, again, the services um, and add that information about this entity. So if I did that, I would just click on add, uh, pick the specialties. So this is just basically the basic information that I wanna track. I have this set up as a multi-select, hit save, and now I've updated that on this entity. And now I can also do connections between community orgs and people. So maybe this org has a connection to a person in my campaign. So now I can actually search for a person. Um, how about Mina? So Mina's in there and, you know, perhaps uh, former uh, uh, vice prez. And I would add that connection. And then on that connection, uh, as you know, I can add additional info on the connection. And that's something that you would have to set up. In the same way, we can just show connections between uh, churches and the community centers. So we know that the, uh, we have a church that exists uh, called, uh, I think, Moore, maybe not. Oh, sorry. I think we have, okay, yeah, this church. And in the same way, you can add your notes and your various connections on that. So I can add an info on top of that connection as well. Um, but for this demo, I'm just going to show you the connection between the two entities. So now you can see that I'm building a, a much more robust kind of look at this entity, which is the church, right? So if I go back to my wall chart, so let's, go, let's navigate this way. You'll notice that it does default to people. And now for the individuals that I go into, again, we still have the ability to track people to people, people to buildings, that additional kind of information that we want to track that's custom that we set up in addition to the connections. So it is a two-way connection between the two uh, entities as well. I'm gonna go back to the wall chart. And I mean, as a demo and as an overview, these are the main kind of updates. Uh, I will ask uh, Martha, is there anything else that you, you think that would be interesting or I should cover that we didn't get to see so far? I don't think so. All right. Um, so I guess I really wanted to kind of talk about next steps um, as far as kind of the, the updates um, as they're happening. Um, you received an email from us uh, a couple of days ago telling you about um, this webinar. Um, again, it's being recorded. We'll put this up and, and share the link. Um, Martha, I didn't know if you want to close things out. It looks like we have a few kind of uh, questions in the chat, which I'm not certain we're going to be able to uh, get to. Um, but Oh, it looks like you've been fielding them here. Thanks, Martha. Awesome. Yeah, there is a question about the <clears throat> upcoming Action Network Action Builder integration that mm -hmm. might be worth spending a couple minutes on. 
Um, so I can just describe that briefly. That'll be coming a couple weeks after the deploy with the entities connections that Seth just outlined. So um, very excited. This action network integration will be two way, um, but you'll set it up on the action builder side um, on this campaign customization tab that Seth has pulled up. Um, so what you'll do is as an admin, you'll put in the API keys for your different action network groups. Um, action Builder has campaigns, Action Network has groups. Um, once you've enabled, you've set up that API key as an admin, those groups will be available in the drop down here um, in the Action Builder campaign customization tab um, in the integrations tab. So you'll be able to select a, a single Action Network group to sync this Action Builder campaign to. When you set up that that sync that link between this action network campaign and that action build uh, this action builder campaign and that action network group, um, a magic tag uh, we're currently calling it will be created. Um, that magic tag will probably be something like the name of the campaign plus the date, and that tag is created on the action network side. Um, so you'll go over and open up your account in action network. This new tag will be present in Action Network. Any people who receive that tag in Action Network will be created or matched to a new record in Action Builder. Um, you can, in Action Network, set up uh, an automated process for assigning tags to people in Action Network. So for instance, you could say, OK, I'm going to link this uh, worker drive for XYZ company. Um, campaign in Action Builder to a similarly named group or to a local unions group or you're to your internationals group in Action Network, then you can create a petition or a form for people to sign up in Action Network. Um, it'll be public facing, but anybody who completes that form could get that magic tag with the name of your campaign. Um, so this will be a way to populate action builder with new leads, people who want to be involved, people who should get a one-on-one -on -one follow up from an organizer in a seamless way. You'll also be able to map action builder responses to action network tags and then that information will be kept up to date. So you could see who received a petition, um, who signed a petition, um, all of that information. You could sign people up for text message updates. In action builder, you could say that this person is interested in um, becoming a member, paying membership dues, or interested in um, like PAC deductions. And then you could get them signed up through an automated text series to actually like fill out that paperwork. You could send them that link through this mass texting or mass emailing in action network. Um, super exciting. We're definitely going to be doing more demos as we get closer to the deploy date. So stay posted for that and we can actually like walk through it um, in, entirely. Got another question in the chat. Can we sync Action Builder contacts back to Action Network groups? Great question, absolutely. Um, and I think we might be able to actually show you this. If you click into anybody's profile, Seth, um, there's a new option to the right of the phone number or to the right of the email to subscribe a person. And here you see the little, under email addresses, that like little green um, <clears throat> like notification image. Um, that means that person is subscribed in Action Network. Um, and when you turn on the sync, if you take the action of subscribing a phone number, it will actually subscribe them in Action Network. <clears throat> Another great question, can the subscription be done as a batch? On the Action Network side, yes. Um, we are adding mass operations in Action Builder as part of this upcoming development cycle. Right now, being able to bulk subscribe people um, <clears throat> through the user interface is not on the list. But that is something that you can do really easily through Action Network. Um, Lots of good questions. Yeah, yeah. I kind of didn't gloss over uh, the, the, the subscription icon, but this, was a, this is a big thing. This is kind of what shows us kind of how uh, the two systems are going to be able to kind of sync and talk to each other um, in, a, in a legit way. Um, but to Martha's point, we will be uh, doing way more demos between now time and, and uh, go time, uh, if you will. But we're really excited. Um, 
For those of you who are also Action Network uh, users, you'll note that we do have some updates coming there uh, with text to join. Uh, so that could work really kind of, and that's the mass text um, option we have for mass uh, mobile messaging on Action Network. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how organizers um, uh, can use, uh, use use that within their program as well between the two systems. But um, being able to have that mobilization of action network and identify uh, those emerging leaders and create those listen action builder is kind of like the, the holy grail, if you will, uh, for a lot of our folks that we've spoken with and taken their input in on what's, what do they need? Um, so, you know, we've been listening and Martha's been listening uh, <laughs> even more so intently and in working with the developers um, to add these updates. So it's really exciting. Uh, it's really, really exciting. So hopefully you've seen something here that's gotten your your uh, juices going, your mind going on kind of how you might want to um, use this going forward. Um, a, a best case scenario is not necessarily having as many entities that I have showing today. This is purely just uh, demo purposes. You might start out with like one or two um, that make the most sense, um, but we'll be going through best practices um, on the demos um, and trainings that are coming down in the future. But this is really a sneak peek. So thanks for joining us. Um, and reach out to me with any questions or support at actionbuilder.org. Um, and uh, I think that's pretty much what we got today. We can wrap. Awesome. Thanks, folks. <laughs>